Hi guys, my name's Yavana. Welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing Ian McEwan's books. Actually, seven of his books that I've read so far. Um, there are five of them here, but then two of them I read online, so they're not, I mean, they're online. <laughs> Find them. <laughs> if you haven't read Ian McEwan yet, you've been living under a rock, my friends. And it's time for you to lift it, free yourself, and run to your local library. My relationship with Amy Kewen started when I was when I was a junior in high school, in university. Yes, um, and from then on, it just kept flourishing. Well, of course, we've had ups and downs, but it's been mostly a fun time. Uh, it's true that at times you feel like he's almost showing off with his vocabulary and long sentences, but with his plots, it just works perfectly well. Plus, I can never hate anything Ian McEwan writes because he writes so beautifully that he could be describing the most disgusting things and you'd go like, wow, it's like a, a gentle evening breeze caressing my skin or like a tornado but the one you're happy to watch from afar and that doesn't cause any damage that is like not really the definition of a tornado but you see what I mean. First book I'm going to be talking about is On Chesil Beach and it's actually one of his shortest books around 200 oh 165 pages. Um, when I first picked it up, I had many assumptions like I thought it was going to be about this long honeymoon with a lot of honeymoony things in it, um, but I was wrong. What if I tell you that the entire book talks about a single event that lasts two hours. If it was written by any other author, I wouldn't have read it, but because it's McEwen, I knew it was going to be great because he has this thing, I mean, he just makes the most boring things seem spectacular, and that's what he did in his book. So this book is basically about a young couple on their wedding night and how they get nervous. And by nervous, I mean nervous, nervous. Um, it, it just makes you feel all the anxieties and fears that the characters experience, but in a good way. The characters themselves are very vivid and you feel a deep connection with them. What I especially like about this book is how it illustrates um, how not saying how you feel can change everything for the worse. The second book is Nutshell. Um, the mere fact that this book was written from the perspective of a fetus makes it unlike anything I've read before. And the fetus is pretty eloquent too. It says stuff like, let me read it for you. Uh, but here's life's most limiting truth. It's always now, always here, never then and there. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny to me to imagine a fetus talking like an educated individual and that's why I really love this book because it made me giggle probably more than I should have. <laughs> um, so in a nutshell, nutshell talks about a, a pregnant woman who's having an affair with her husband's um, brother. And then they plot to kill the husband. Um, the baby sees and hears it all without being able to intervene, obviously. If it sounds a lot like Hamlet, that's because that's exactly what it is. A modern day Hamlet told from the perspective of a fetus. Um, anyway, it's such a unique story that I found really enjoyable. So the next book is Amsterdam. I don't have it right now, so I'm just gonna insert a photo right here, right here. Um, this book has a ridiculous ending that I just can't forgive Mickey one for. Um, also, the title of the book 
was very misleading because I kept waiting for someone, anyone, to go to Amsterdam and nobody did until the very end. Um, the book has a lot of politics and morality in it, which sounds great, but then uh, it's also hard for you to decide what the book is really about if it has so many elements. Well, anyway, in this book it was hard to decide what it was about. Um, the opening scene is that of Molly's funeral. Molly is a woman who's had um, four ex-lovers and they're all there at her funeral. Um, anyway, they get so traumatized by her untimely death and everything gets, everything goes downhill. What bothers me is that the book starts out in one way and then takes a completely different turn and we don't we never really find out who Molly truly is. Um, we never find out almost anything about her life and or um, the relationship she had with the with the ex-lovers. Um, so as I said, there are four ex-lovers, but then two of them are are central characters. And then these two characters get more horrible more and more horrible with every single page. Um, what I did like about, what I did like about Amsterdam was Mickey was ever so elegant prose um, that it never just never disappoints. Um, even in my least favorite books such as this one, I never go like, oh, I can't go on reading this nonsense. Like I'm I'm done with it. But um, you enjoy the ride and. Sometimes it takes you to a disappointing place, but you're content nevertheless. The next book is Machines Like Me, and to be honest, I wasn't going to buy this book because I read the reviews and they didn't seem promising. It only had 3.5 stars on Goodreads, so I thought like, okay, I'm just going to pick another book. But and then I don't know what happened, but I went ahead and bought it, and I don't regret it. In fact, I think I think I'm gonna reread it this month. It's that good. Uh, if you like anything that's um, sci-fi, high-tech, dystopian, or you like mirrors, like uh, mirrors. If you like shows like Black Mirror on uh, Netflix, you're gonna enjoy this book just as much as I did. Um, it's also, so this book talks about a couple that decide to buy one of the artificial humans. Um, I'm trying not to reveal too much, um, so you can enjoy this book without the spoilers. But, um, it's important to mention that this book is also an alternate history book, um, because it is set in the alternate history, in the alternate, uh, 1980s, uh, where, Britain um, lost, or the UK lost the Falklands War, and the uh, great British scientist Alan Turing is still alive, and he's the one who makes, he goes on to make um, the first artificial human. Um, so there's a love triangle in the book, uh, and all sorts of philosophical questions are raised, like, are, uh, is artificial intelligence capable of love? Um, how do robot? How do robots that are logical survive in an illogical world? All in all, I just really enjoyed it, and, I'd, and, I, and I'd highly recommend it. Next book is First Love, Last Rites. Um, okay, obviously I love, I like everything um, Hewan writes, but this book made me cringe more times than I can count. Um, and it left me with very vivid images that weren't what I wanted to picture, like, ever, and <laughs> that later gave me nightmares. Um, so yes, it is a collection of short stories. Um, all of them are very dark, um, disturbing, and perverse. Um, what is interesting, though, is that it is written in first person. Almost, I think almost all of the stories are written in first person. Yeah, except for two of them. That's right. And that's interesting because it 
you never get to really judge. The, the writer, Ian McEwan, doesn't antagonize them or judge them. Um, so you almost feel compassionate towards them, um, which is really hard to do in, in a normal world. But because the, the book is written like that, uh, it makes you reflect on why, like what made them, what made these characters do such terrible things. Um, I remember going like, oh, okay, that's understandable. And then going like, no, that's not okay. That's not okay at all. Um, so anyway, if this is your first Ian McEwan book, please leave it and then pick up another one and then come back to this one later, like much later. So if you've heard of Ian McEwan, you've heard of Atonement, which is the next book I'm going to be talking about. And another one that I don't have a copy of, so I'm just going to insert a photo right here. Um, the, um, the plot is very good. The um, characters are very well drawn. You really get to connect with them. Um, the story is complex. There's a wonderful Virginia Woolf vibe at the beginning and there's nothing not to love about this book to be honest as the name suggests it's about a young girl's quest to lifelong quest to redeem herself um when the book when the book starts she's just a young girl uh who's also an aspiring writer um, her cousins come to visit and she wants them to act in the play that she's written herself. And then she witnesses something, mm, I won't tell you what, but it, it involves her sister and the family gardener. And then everyone, everyone's life is changed and the young man's character is ruined forever. Um, what make, what makes matters worse is that Brownie is also an unre unreliable narrator, because why not? <laughs> um, because she's unable to accept reality, and because she's a writer as well, she likes making her own version of events and just persuading herself that they're true. So yeah, she's also very controlling, and but let's not forget that She's just a child, and that literally my, my heart breaks for her because imagine spending your whole life trying to make up for that one thing you said or did wrong. And I also, like on the other hand, my heart breaks for the characters whose lives are ruined because of her. Um, so... I could feel every emotion in this in this book, and I cried so much. And it's just I I, re I cannot recommend it enough. All right, so the next book is The Comfort of Strangers. Um, first of all, the title is super ironic. Um, uh, it should have been named um everything but The Comfort of Strangers. Um. This book was written around the same time as First Love, Last Rites. And if you remember what I said about this book, creepy, weird, twisted, why did I read it? <laughs> I mean, not really, but um, that's kind of the same vibe that goes on in this book as well. Um, I mean, the 70s were apparently a very weird time to be inside Ian McEwan's mind, as far as fiction is concerned. So the story is about a couple, uh, Colin and Mary. They're on vacation, and they do the usual vacation stuff. Um, but they're kind of bored and keep getting lost, and um, one day they end up meeting a, a very weird guy who tells them strange stories, and he's also dressed... He's wearing some bizarre clothes. Um, I mean, I'd probably run. But the characters decide they should absolutely meet, agree, that, like, they agree to meet him again. Can you imagine? 
Um, I didn't find the characters relatable because of that. Because, you know, you see a strange guy and then he's all weird. And then you say, yes, I want to see you again. And um, So, except for being... Except for the fact that they're self-destruct, that the characters in this book are self-destructive, I like the uh, creepy vibe. Um, like the atmosphere was really good. And as always, I liked Ian McEwan's prose. It's impeccable. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked my reviews. And if you want to know something about a one of these books in particular. Let me know, like, if you want a more thorough review. Um, I'll be happy to, to do it for you. So, yes, this is my first video. So give it a thumbs up and um, see you in the next one. Bye.